Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are here for our third series of the day, GSM versus Goliath Esports Warriors here in Goldcapped. This is going to be a really exciting matchup between these two teams. And right off the bat, we have uh, Yasuo and Diana bands. Yeah, taking the Yasuo away from uh, Tetra, taking the Diana away from Levi. And the Darius going to be taken away as well. So this is gold capped, if you are unfamiliar with it. So we, uh, you know, we're expecting to see a lot of comfort picks rather than like super strong meta picks here. And since I'm not really well acquainted with gold, maybe maybe you could fill me in on uh, these two teams here. Yeah, so uh, so GSM is the first seed. They're pretty. I think they're undefeated. They've dropped a couple of singular games, but they haven't lost any series. Uh, they actually did drop one game to Goliath Esports Warriors, who's the four seed for gold, uh, the last time that they met. And Goliath Esports Warriors, of course, the four seed, um, they have shown a very strong resurgence in the last couple of weeks of the split. They, I believe, took down Gods of Herald in their second matchup uh, and ended up beating out the Bad Barons to take that four spot. And they're going to be taking away Panthers, Zack, and Silver Spades, Morgana. All right, and so for right now, blue team, let's see. Let's see what he's going to pick here. You said they have comfort picks, and it looks like Set is going to come out, and they're just going to come out swinging. And yeah, let's see yeah. how Goliath Esports responds. Yeah, Set is one of Zacco's, um, one of Zacco's comfort picks. I mean, Zacco is fairly, um, fairly, like... I, how do you how do you say that the he plays a lot of champions he's got a fairly deep champion pool uh, uh, a so champion ocean he's right. got a champion ocean a lot of things look like comfort picks when he plays them oh and they respond with an orn pick someone keeps oh no they last minute and, oh. and then this pick right here is gonna be uh, rexi okay they opt for a very early game jungler let's see how gsm responds yeah, Rek'Sai, very strong early game jungler. Panther is less of an early game jungle player. His two best champions, the Zac that's been banned away, and Amumu, kind of the Panther special. So it'll be interesting to see what he picks up in uh, in answer to this Rek'Sai. And my god, is it going to be Mundo? Uh, Dr. Mundo. <laughs> it's a very interesting pick. I, uh, I haven't seen this pick in Platinum, I don't believe. At least... Not from what I remember. Uh, hold on. Yeah, so... Mundo, uh... I actually haven't seen a Mundo jungle. So, t one of two things. Either Panther's just playing Mundo into Rek'Sai, or, okay, the other option was a set support, but this is going to be Silver Spades Thresh. It is, um... Terrifying. As someone who has played against Silver Spade a fair number of times, it's freaking terrifying to play against his thresh i'm guessing he has a bunch of lane pressure i guess he won't let you just get away with what just walking up and csing for free red team opts to first to round out their first out their first half of their picks with varus they ban ezreal uh, yeah they're trying to take that one away from beekeeper but again beekeeper um has a fair number of different uh you know has a fair number of different um what do you call him? He's got he's got a few champions as well. It's not like he has a signature champion, like say, uh, Silver Spades Thresh or you know Levi's Diana that got banned away. Right, like Panthers, Zach, or or Amumu. My 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 Twitch account keeps getting logged out, which uh -oh. is really annoying because I'm trying to monitor the stream and I can't see it because it just keeps logging me out but the tom kench is picked up by goliath esports let's see how gsm responds you know we're looking at a mid or ad um i believe they would pick ad seeing as how you have the counter pick but then since you have you're also second pick i guess your mid lane is also going to get counter picked anyways yeah, I mean, it's the Zaya there, which is, you know, another beekeeper. It's, beekeeper plays fairly um, fairly uh, standard champions. You know, he's not pulling out, like, a Twitch or anything. 
but the yeah, bard, not like a draven. <laughs> the bard's being hovered. Uh, I think Levi's threatened to play bard mid, and that's why uh, that's why they're picking, or that's why they're hovering it. Very interesting. If you were gonna go for that, seeing as uh, it would instantly get countered, and then they opt for Ari, and let's see how Galathi Sports responds. Yeah, Ari much harder to counter pick. You know, there are a few. Um, she's just so mobile that it's hard to get on top of her. Yeah, it's a very safe pick because since you don't want to get countered, and they opt for like a Cassio, actually. Yeah, that is one of the few answers that you can give to an Ari. Uh, the grounding is super strong. That's yeah. right. It prevents the uh, all the mobility that she wants to have. Yeah, and we'll uh, we'll see how this plays out, but. Right now, just looking at it, which team do you think, or would you prefer? Uh, Nameplates off the Varus Tom Kench is an interesting bot lane. Um, it's very safe into the pick potential of Thresh. I also, okay, so that will be a set jungle into the Rek'Sai, which oh. I still favor Rek'Sai, but at least set can kind of brawl with her a little bit. And then Mundo Malphite. I think that one just definitely goes in the way of the Mundo. Malphite can't really kill him. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say GSM. I think has the better draft. They've got a lot of pick, and uh, meanwhile, Goliath Esports has kind of some weird, like pokey CG sort of composition that I don't think it really comes together. <laughs> uh, I do have to agree with you, just a little bit. Um, it's just the fact that. Uh, Galathi Sports' team is kind of it's a very all-in type team when like they want to all-in you but uh, GSM's team is very counter-engaged you know if Malphite ever presses R and goes in set immediately responds with his own ulti just straight in the middle of five people and that allows for like a really good setup or he like he really like paves the way for his team to kind of just do their thing yeah I definitely agree not to mention the Rek'Sai is kind of kind of interesting because obviously early game junglers don't really have that much um, don't really have that much agency in the late game. But right. to me, like Rek'Sai is weird because if she doesn't get super far ahead early, then you're kind of just useless. Whereas even if you do get ahead, you're just gonna be a little bit more relevant for a little bit longer, and then after that, you're kind of just a knock up bot. Kind of mm -hmm. feels like. Um, What's the other early game? Elise. Kind of feels like an Elise late game. You know, you're just looking for knockups or picks. Right. Right. So, real realistically, uh, Goliath Sports team comp all relies on having Rek'Sai just carrying the early game on her back, and then in turn, having the rest of her team carrying her on their backs come, say, 20 minutes later. Yeah. And I, I don't know. The, it feels like goliath esports has drafted three losing lanes and a really good early game jungler so it'll kind of be on great grump's back to carry this early game for goliath esports warriors and yeah uh we we have to see though we're only talking about like say like in a vacuum where every like player is basically perfect you know but since this is gold and nothing ever like plays out how you would expect we're gonna see like a couple like misplays, like miss skill shots, miss flashes, things like that, and maybe that'll be enough to turn the tide to maybe have Goliath uh, triumph just this game. Yeah, that is that is one thing that always you know burden of execution. It's definitely a you know it's definitely easier for Goliath esports warriors once you get into that mid late game. It's way easier for them to to capitalize on that team comp because really your engage is Malphite and Rek'Sai. And those are two really easy things to just point and click, hit the middle of their team. Right. Uh, and then you can just combo all of your big skill shot or all of your big abilities and alts. Yeah, the Cassio ulti and the Varus ulti and the like. So really have to see in about five seconds, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get into the loading screen. So before before the game actually starts, do you want to talk about... We haven't like gone into detail on like, lane specific. So we can we can do that starting from top lane Malphite versus Mundo. I think we kind of like we did like a light discussion, I guess. I think since Malphite would never be able to kill Mundo early and like it's like to the point where Mundo is unbeatable, I would say. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I 
that's yeah that was basically that's basically my take on it as well you know mundo just gets if you don't kill him early and you, you would basically need rexai to do that if you're right. not putting all of that pressure top lane early mundo's gonna get way too out of control for malphite to deal with certainly and then it basically becomes a how fed is cassiopeia and how much damage can you pump into that mundo yeah and so moving on to the jungler wise i think we've already we've already like said it like they don't really go ahead like they do meet each other in the jungle but it's more it's more like who impacts the map more and that like goes to rek'sai but she does she does fall off really hard in the late game so all gsm really needs to do is kind of just sit back and be aware of rek'sai and you would just like just naturally like negate her presence yeah so we have just gotten in the game we'll have to see how these matchups uh shake out as opposed to you know our theoretical takes on it uh our in a vacuum predictions but it is gecko slammer armageddon gold versus goliath esports warriors so on the blue side we have gsm uh, it's El Zacco 69 in the top lane on Mundo Panther 553212 on set in the jungle. GSM Levi's play in that RA mid lane and Naked Beekeeper and Silver Spade 10 in the bot lane on Zaya and Thresh. And on the red side we have Goliath Esports Warriors. Their top lane is the anti hero on Malphite. Their jungler is Great Go Great Gromp on Rek'Sai. Their mid laner is Tetra on the Cassio. And their bot lane consists of Snoop Bay and Huya on Varus and Tom Kench. And this is an interesting so, matchup because GSM and Goliath Esports, uh, they played in week 10 of gold. So that was the final game. You know, obviously it was pretty much locked that GSM was first seed, Goliath Esports was fourth seed. So they went into that knowing that there was nothing that they could do other than just get practice in. And, uh... It ended up uh, getting a little bit, you know, a little bit nasty. They were throwing snipes back and forth. And the one thing, the one notable thing in particular that I remember from Tetra was posting a, you know, posting the post-match of the game that, G, uh, that GEW won against GSM in their last matchup with the caption, don't think that it won't happen again. So I want to see if it'll happen again. <laughs> and uh, we're about to find out, aren't we? So both junglers opting to start uh, on their respective red sides now. And Set opts to go for Raptors while Rek'Sai immediately heads for a blue buff. I think we might we might potentially see a uh, maybe like an early gank from Rek'Sai down in the bot lane. Yeah. Since like, um since oh. GSM's bot lane is expressing dominance really hard. And uh, they might leave themselves open to it, an early gank, and we'll see how that goes. Yeah, smelling that level 3 gank there by Rek'Sai. It looks like she is going to do the uh, the blue and gromp trick where she's going to try and take two of the... Uh, she's going to try and take both of the camps both at the same, at the same time. time. Yeah. So she's going to go ahead and get that blue. It looks like the gromp is soon to follow. And uh, Great Gromp may be headed bot, as you said. GSM is moving pretty far forward. I mean, they're just about at half lane, but it's very easy to gank as Rek'Sai when no one has mobility. All right, we do see, because as for G, uh, Glad Esports' is, uh, bot lane, it's very hard to set up a gank since you don't really have that much CC. You're really relying on the knockup from Rek'Sai. And here she does come. She's sitting in tri-bush. Yeah. She's opting to uh, wait for a perfect, oh no. Uh -oh. oh. Okay. okay, she can't. Just, a, just, a, just lagging. That would have been very and unfortunate, but it looks like Rek'Sai's coming through. Silver Spade does get a pull. But yeah, I mean, that pull basically keeps Goliath Esports Warriors bot lane from moving forward, and it will stop that gank dead in its tracks. Now Set is in the river, looking to possibly find this Rek'Sai. And they do rotate up, but as Rek'Sai can just easily... Oh. All right, yeah, there we go. Uh... Looks like Great Grump is having some internet difficulties. I mean, we saw that in the try brush. He stopped, you know, lagged out, reconnected for a second. But hopefully he gets those fixed very soon. I really would hate to just sit here and have absolutely nothing to, t or like go just way beyond topic just because our a jungler disconnected, you know? I would hate to, uh, just hate to just turn this into a like a GRLCS talk show if you want to throw up a topic. 
it's just some random offshoot that we could just talk about. Yeah, hit it, know? chat. What uh, what do you want to hear from Boosted Asian, the the man, the myth, the Sensei Squad ADC going to finals tomorrow? Oh, oh, okay. You're turning this into like a personal AMA. Okay, I'll play along. So, uh, so you know, you you beat, uh, you beat down, um, whoever it was. Who 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 did you play? Glass. Okay, yeah, so you beat down Goliath Esports Lions uh, fairly convincingly in that 2-0. There's a little, uh, some people would call that a stomp. I mean, how was, <laughs> what was it, what was your preparation going into there? Um, there wasn't, honestly, there really wasn't much team preparation. We didn't scrim that much. It was mostly just me and Zale, our support, just playing like a bunch of like normal games, just trying to like warm up. I was just playing a lot of Aphelios because I kind of just, the champion just really grew on on me, so I wasn't really, you would say I wasn't really prepped to come in there. I was kind of nervous today because um, I do think Goliath, I do think they're like a pretty good team, um, but like their bot lane, they weren't really aggressive, I guess. Like they're, they play for, um, they play for late game. So it's kind of just like a really back and forth like farming phase, I guess. And I think I just had the better champion in game one. To, so like, you played scale you with. played Aphelios in that game one? No, no, I played Varus and they had Ezreal. Okay, well that yeah, I I would agree. Yeah, Varus is actually quite strong right now. Did you play him uh, on hit or the poke Varus? Uh, I needed to go on hit because they had a Zac top and a Trundle jungle. Oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, game two, um, it was I was on the Aphelios, and uh, they had the Varus. And honestly, they should uh, we should not have won that because their Varus ended up being seven uh, zero. He did get like most of his team's kills. And at that point, I was kind of thinking to myself, this might be like slightly problematic um, since like he is My super fed is and great comp. <laughs> He came, and as fast as he came, he left. Uh, back to the conversation. Um, yeah, he was really 7-0, and and I was kind of worried, because I think I only had, say, only a couple kills compared to him. But, like, our team realized that once... That, like, he's he was basically their entire team's damage. So once he was pretty much down for the count, like, their team was, like, they just rolled over and died. And, like, it was really, like, highlighted in that game, because we were, like, losing team fights like back to back and then we just like won like one or two and then we just like snowballed it into a baron and like into their base and whatnot and the game was just over from that point yeah that i mean i i actually i didn't get to watch uh that one i was actually watching the uh, gold series that maristomatic was doing but ah. i was chatting with some of the other uh get wrecked admins afterward and it was just like geez they mean i mean you know, game one, it just you kind of slapped, and then game two is like, wow, that looked um, it looked shaky for a minute, but you pulled it out. Uh, and the interesting part of that of that win, and then of course, uh, Pigs Might Fly's upset over Pootie Tang Gang was that you are going against your former support, Mark Hames, who specifically left the team to make a team that could beat Sensei Squad. Um, my opinion on him is uh. It was kind of it was kind of a shock when he first did it because he didn't really announce he didn't really like announce it or like to us like as soon as we won uh, fall split he kind of just went on stream and said like I'm leaving Sensei Squad and then like just to like have X credits and I was just like I was like okay, <laughs> okay I guess I mean geez. I mean, we probably wouldn't be, like, on the same team as, like, people kind of just, like, leave and go on different teams all the times. But, like, that's kind of just, like, a slap in the face. And I honestly, I don't think anyone expected uh, Pigs to beat Pootie Tang. Like, maybe maybe Pigs themselves. Maybe they had, like, some, like, confidence boost. But I was kind of really surprised to see it. And uh, But kind of in, on the inside, I'm a little bit happy. Like, they showed that, like, you know, we weren't, like, the weaker conference, so to say, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you both, yeah, both conferences brought two teams to the to the semis, and, I mean, both conf or, uh, both Solari teams made it through in 2-0, so that's always a good sign for how strong your conference was. 
Right, after like being, having everyone say, oh, we're the weaker conference, you know, you got teams like Pootie Tang, you got Rodham, you got G, like Goliath, like on the other side, you know, all the stack team are on the Lunari conference and Sensei squad just gets like the easy teams, like they get like an easy way into the finals or whatever. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I was one of those people as well, I was, you know, because <laughs> Because I was casting, um, I was casting Lunari a fair amount of the time. So I'm sitting here. I'm like, I'm watching, you know, the Pootie Tang Gang, Cosmic Flow, and, and I was like, wow, you know, these teams are like, yeah, they're real even. Everyone's taking games off each other. GSM even had that uh, that resurgence in the back half of the split. So I was like, you know, this is like a competitive conference. This is this is good. Meanwhile, I would like look at the Sensei Squad games, and just be like, this isn't, this isn't close, is it? <laughs> Uh, they were kind of close, you know, we had games where, like, we would just, they would stomp us early, and then, like, suddenly, we just do, like, a G2 and, like, pull, like, a turnaround, like, out of, like, a hat, you know, and just you win just, the game. You just have those team fights. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, uh, honestly, to, like, today's game, today's game, too, I would say was no different from what we usually do. And, uh, it seems like we got some reconnections. Maybe we'll start soon? Yeah, hopefully. Oh, there we go. Great. Great Grump did reconnect, so I think the anti-hero dropped though as well. So maybe there's oh, they just... did say they're ready, so I believe there are. Oh, back. okay, yeah. I don't have chat pulled up because that can always go south when you're streaming. <laughs> right, right. Well, and hopefully they're any... about ready. Any moment now. There we go. There we go. The prophet himself. And back to it. Uh, so far. Things have tried to happen, things haven't really happened, and I'm hoping things are about to happen, but I, that's... seeing as how mid lane is shoved and Rek'Sai doesn't seem to be like, she doesn't have any intention of like coming from behind maybe on the Ari. Uh, top lane, you know, is kind of just like, like a little mini brawl fest, and then bot lane is just, it's fairly even at this point i would say you think yeah I, yeah i would say it's even i mean the cs of course is even uh snoopy and hoya have gotten a little bit more you know gotten a little bit of pressure back in that lane um i, I think this like this early game will basically kind of be panther versus great gromp until we start getting those sixes out of levi's and tetra and then i think they're they're gonna start duking it out because there, there's a fair amount of uh, of of rivalry that that they're that they're setting up between the two of them. <laughs> Silver Spade so doing the fake uh, the fake lantern in. <laughs> and so far, yeah, it's um, it's definitely gonna be a little bit of a snooze fest. Uh, both teams, I would say, they're not really they're they're not teams built to um to dive. I would say. Maybe more so Goliath, just because you can have Tom Ken eat the person. And uh, right now, Rek'Sai is going to Gromp. Might be looking at a potential bot lane game here, seeing as, once again, they're like nearly shoving to the tower. I think Goliath should freeze the wave here. Yeah, seeing that's... as, um, <laughs> like, you should really punish. You, you should really punish GSM for pushing up so hard, as you want to put them in like you want to put them in like a state of panic or like paranoia oh here we got another disconnect yep there we go another pause well hopefully great grump can figure out his uh internet issues a you know grlcs rules do say that you know the gsm is only required to give 15 minutes of pause time you know half of the total pause timer but you know it's playoffs so everyone generally is a little you know a lot more lenient when it comes to things like that because of course we're streaming live and uh you know you, you don't want to win playoffs off of a disconnect that just feels bad right right where's the uh where's the competitive spirit as uh you know and uh right now i guess we're, we're just gonna go back to uh answering questions chat yeah chat you, you want to hit us with anything uh about Hog earlier, uh, I would definitely love to see Hog come back into a uh, into plat cap. Actually, uh, I believe their Heimerdinger one trick, Ionic Wind, I believe his name was. I would definitely, I'd pay money to have him. Uh, 
to see is Heimerdinger. Who would yeah. win before C9 versus, or between C9 versus G2? Um, I feel like if I answered, this is a very, this is a very biased question coming from a very biased person who might like ban me or like hurt me if I don't say C9. So, you know. <laughs> oh, apparent, uh, yeah, apparently I'm, I'm, I'm hearing there's a fair amount of, there's, there's a lot of problems with the Get Rec 2 stream. Oh. Oh, actually, I I messed up on that question. I forget Hog is gold. Uh, bring back Hog. Actually, can we have? Can we start like a protest? Can we all go outside? Uh, yeah, that makes one of us to bring back Hog. <laughs> uh, like, that makes two I think of us. Two of I was gonna. Say, I think two of the Hog members are banned from GRLCS. So like, <laughs> you know, uh, the there is no way that Button doesn't win MVP. Pin quote and screenshot it. <clears throat> he got banned from the league like four weeks after posting that. And back to the game. Back to uh. uh... So you know, nothing really has been happening. Great Grump did unfortunately get that pathing interrupted probably by his by his internet issues. Uh, he disconnected and started walking back toward base instead of you know going across the wall. I guess that's really something we like didn't discuss. Having to like walk back and forth. Yes, down. So about a couple of camps down, and it means like he's already down a level, which is really gonna like affect him, affect like him like more so than like than say if, if he was playing set since Rexai is such an early game orientated jungler. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you you fall far behind early in CS. You know, if you're if you're an early game jungler like Elise or, or Rek'Sai or Pantheon or something, that's gonna, yeah, as you said, it's gonna be way worse than if you're playing Sat or like Karthus or something. Like, uh, yeah. Like a Graves, yeah. Yeah. Because you're never expecting to fall behind when you're playing, when you're playing Rek'Sai. Well, like, just like, like, not by like, you can fall behind like messing up the game, but like, you don't expect yeah. to like, be a level down just by your internet just suddenly being like that. Yeah, your your internet crapping out, getting two scuttled, actually three scuttled now. So I think I think uh, Panther got his hands on that one, right in front of the dragon pit. Uh, but right. yeah, I mean, it's just kind of unfortunate. But now Hoya might be engaged on Silver Spade. Will not find the hook. Not to, I'm not. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not really like saying anything but like maybe i'm not really in like i'm not really like you know not seeing anything from the thresh maybe it's not really his fault i feel like he should be putting like down a lot more pressure like even though yes you're up yes and here he is like getting caught out i don't know yeah they... it's gonna like yep yeah, they so should... they're just gonna get him off or prevent him from trying to get deeper vision but honestly, I was expecting, I was expecting some key hooks, like maybe force out a couple summoners, or at least get Tom Kent to try and like eat Ferris more. Because I don't think he's been eaten just yet, or there's like there's no need for him to be. Yeah, I was actually super surprised, but oh wow, I mean, the here ultimate. Here we have a gank. Yeah, already Bye. coming out, and Panther. <laughs> Will find the kill. Levi's picks that one up first blood. That was uh explosive. <laughs> <laughs> uh that was just completely just completely out of nowhere. Just just uh the set just ran at him and ulted and he was just gone in an instant. There's just just nothing he could really do about it. And suddenly it seems like Set is just the early game jungler now. Rek'Sai. <laughs> Rek'Sai looks to be the uh, scaling like late game jungler. Yeah, I mean, Set or, or Panther has always been like a, a very good uh, jungler. You know, he consistently out jungles all of his opponents. But to, you know, to do that as Set against like a Rek'Sai is still just impressive. <laughs> We're gonna ignore the fact that Rek'Sai is, you know, <laughs> didn't yeah. really get to play the game for a couple Disconnected minutes. Disconnected <laughs> twice is probably sitting on like 500 ping right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, Ari, Ari does make a good point. That was a weird gank. Because, I mean, Ari flash charmed, 
hit him, and immediately Panther ulted him, so that was just like, I was just like, oh, okay, I guess the flash charm didn't really, didn't really matter, did didn't it? Didn't really mean anything. <laughs> Still and, uh, yeah, so we just saw Glad these ports kind of just like, a bush, you know, just sitting in a bush, waiting for, waiting for something, I think they're, they, they actually just decided to give up Dragon, and, um, it's, since it's an ocean dragon, I really, as Goliath, I really wouldn't put too much pressure on it, seeing as how it's only one, and it, like, shouldn't make too much of a difference, as it's only just, like, missing health regen. Like, compared to, say, an Inferno or a Mountain Drake, um, yeah, I would say it's worth fighting for. So I think this is an alright decision here from Goliath to kind of just give up, like, certain, like, early drakes in exchange for, like, uh, uh, scaling safe. Yeah, I mean, it's just time to scale. You've got Cassiopeia and Varus, two of, you know, two of the best, better early or late game uh, carries in this meta. So, you know, you've got, all you need is time, really. Yeah. And, you know, of course, the Ocean Drake, it's okay on Mundo. Like, it's pretty good on Mundo, but it's still only one Ocean Drake. It's not like you're giving up parts of a soul we see now. Levi. Levi is going in here. He yeah, waits Levi. out the uh, mount fight ult. Unfortunately, the charm just inches away from landing. Yeah, that was that was like barely, almost grazed him. But Antihero does burn his flash on the way out. So now Levi's he is walking back to lane. But Great Gromp could look for something here. He sees him with the radar. Levi's and he is he is hit. caught out. Or now he is not caught out, but like he is kind of like pincered a little bit. I think if Cassia would have rotated, that might have been a free kill, seeing as she had no, like, she had no mobility spells. Yeah, no ult, no flash. I mean, that could have just been a death sentence for Levi's there if they'd, uh, if they decided to follow up on it. Right. The, yeah, uh, I mean, just checking out the CS lead, CS difference, uh, and gold, it's pretty much... Actually, Tetra does have about a 15 CS lead, and he is going for the solo kill, oh, and he's not gonna get it! So close. He, uh, missed a, missed a poison, I believe, like, on, in the process of doing stuff. So. And you're right about the CS. 20, 20 CS difference on, uh, on Mundo. But you got, like, almost a 20 CS difference in mid lane, and then another 20 CS difference in, uh, bot lane. And we're, conveniently, we're just gonna ignore, um, the 30 CS difference in the jungle, you know the uh, the the disconnect really really taking its toll, you know agent disconnect or like or GSM like hired like a DDoS. Yeah, they hired know, Jensen. He's back out of retirement DDoSing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, ISP diff, GG. But honestly, I, honestly, ISP difference. Unfortunately, it might come down to at least that playing a significant factor. You know, glad these players are doing fine yeah. for themselves. But oh. GSM really paid for like you know the Google Fiber for their for their entire like team. You know, they all yeah they all moved to Kansas City, built a built a gaming house. The GSM gaming house is uh, is GSM wired offline up with TV. Google Fiber. Honestly. Seriously though, uh, Ari, get on that. GSM Gaming House. <laughs> get a bunch of content creators. Uh, here we have um, <laughs> an attempted game. Really, really, uh, all, really, all right, all I think. I don't think it was needed. Assuming that, like, if you knew beforehand, you could have just easily walked out. But, but good, like, good prevent of the uh, gank nevertheless, right? Yeah, and I think I think it's a perfectly fine thing to do. You know, it's not like you're really going to need that uh, yeah. in, in yeah, a little yeah. bit. You know, it's it's almost a quarter up already, so it'll be up by like 15 minutes, right? And Goliath, they respond with Rift Tail. This is, this is a really good rotation. I wonder where they're going to put it. Um, Romp decides to... Oh, we got a return gank, and he's sandwiched. Yeah. Uh, Snoopy is sandwiched, and I think this is gonna be the end of him. Yeah, he flashes, heals, they actually get the flash out of Silver Spade and the kill. 
The first turret will go down in favor of GSM, and a lot of summoners burned here for the Goliath Esports bot lane. Meanwhile, Great Gromp here in the top lane. They're gonna try and go for Zacco, but he's gonna pop the ultimate. He flashes away as well, and he's... They're not gonna be able to do anything to him. <laughs> He's pretty much, he's like touched like, or he's reached like his untouchable stage right now. Like you can't, it's gonna be impossible. The best you can do is pretty much tickle him. But yeah, and they, they opt to drop the Rift Herald here. And uh, I guess it's kind of all right. Like 14 minutes have like, like gone and you know, passed. So there's really no point in using like, you can't use it to get early plays like Snowball, say, your mid and jungle, and they they actually do get him. El Zacco walks up a little bit too far, and Levi here just gets <laughs> three-man under tower. Although GSM do respond with a uh, Inferno Drake, and suddenly it's kind of looking like a little bit more of an even game now. Now that you have the, you have gotten top lane tower and you gotten two three kills. Uh, like I said, like giving up, like giving up the drakes that don't spawn, like, like uh, the the ones that aren't the soul, is like generally a okay idea in exchange for um for scaling. And uh, but it's a little bit of a shame that Cassio did not get like um any of those kills, seeing as how she wants to be like one of the people to scale on Goliath's team. Yeah, I mean, Cassio and Varus really need to be the two people that you're funneling, and unfortunately, everyone has a kill except for Cassio <laughs> and Varus. <laughs> but, uh, everything that's starting to go a little bit, like, off track for uh, Goliath, but, like, it's not, you know, the the train is, like, you're rocking a little bit, but it's not about to go off the rails just yeah, you're, yet. You're just, you're rounding this corner, you're, like, tipping a little bit, and you're, but, but you know, all in all, you're still fine. You're, you're still on yeah. the rails, you're just Getting a little, getting a little shaky here. But now, I mean, GSM, they do have, you know, it's not like we've been talking about how Goliath Esports is, uh, you know, they're really the scaling team here, and it's not like GSM doesn't scale. I mean, they've got Mundo, they've got Zaya. It's just Goliath Esports scales better. They've got scarier late game things like you know, Machine Gun Cassiopeia, and uh, they have a. I guess like a very or a better team comp like a very wombo combo team comp Yeah, it's the it's the don't step up near us because one of us will hit you with something and then we'll just destroy you in the 5v5 And in terms of um, in terms of macro play here, I think GSM should want uh, Their bot lane to go and take the top of the tower as to open up like more of the map for them and Instead, I think they would opt to rotate to mid lane, which is also not a bad decision, seeing as how Goliath Esports really hasn't like, responded, as Cassio is the sole one in mid lane. Yeah, and they I do have that uh, that Tom Kench ultimate, so they can, or they could have, if uh, Snoopy had stuck with Hoya, but it, now, I mean, it is two men in the mid lane, and Levi's actually getting caught by Great Grom. The ultimate I is available. It's soloing Levi's him. just going to go down. However, Great Grom will fall as well. Naked Beekeeper picks up the kill on that one, and Levi's just way out of position again. Now, Hoya does have to flash away. The ultimate expended by Tetra. Panther going to get the tip of the Haymaker off. Silver Spade going to miss another hook, and this Thresh, it, he's, he's got a couple moments, but he is not performing at the level that we expected. Yeah, um, yeah, it's kind of, it is not really head-scratching, but, like, it's slightly dis- Oh, there, okay, you got one hook, oh. ends up being saved, but it's, you know, that's what Tom Kench does, right? Like, your job is just to do it multiple times over, like, yes. be consistent. And here we have oh. Malphite TP, Malphite ulti. Yeah, the and... Malphite ulti is gonna find two. Now, Zacco's here, they're gonna pick up anti-hero they're looking for hoya as well and they can dive but looks like zacko isn't gonna push it tetra now teleporting into the mid lane to try and save his team's bacon right and if you were if you were goliath this is probably one of the better outcomes for you seeing as how you get more you get more kills than gsm and also but like the people that die on your like on your team it doesn't lead into anything for GSM. Like, 
if GSM, even though GSM got those kills, they could not say, they couldn't break down the tower, right? So, yeah. like, this is just more of, like, scaling. Scaling for, like, Goliath, but, like, in ex like you don't sacrifice anything like you would, like, the two early drakes. And we have, what soul is this? Let me check really quick. It is Mountain Soul, actually. So this is the point of no return. This is the point where, um, where Goliath needs to start, like, contesting these drakes because you do not want... GSM to just get um just to get mountain soul and suddenly like your wombo combo like team com even if you do get it off the extra extra shield they have might just enable them to survive and here we have great gromp um walking up a little bit too far and gets instantly charmed and killed yeah honestly I, uh... it kind of seems like every every fight or every kill is just being precipitated by like oh and this guy's just a little bit out of position and everyone's got such good pick and such good dueling that like the moment that you get out of position you're screwed <laughs> right but yeah now and... the third drake is going to be picked up because great gromp is dead so this is a uh, you know big news for gsm they pick up a kill they pick up a dragon now they've got gw on soul point and uh they've got to start forcing these fights around dragons Right, uh, Varus needs to really hit two items as fast as possible so this team comp can really, like, start to shine here. And it, it isn't gonna be long before GSM start looking towards, like, like, looking past Mountain Soul and immediately, like, try and go Baron. Since they struggled a little bit to break open the base, but I think Baron is, like, like the secret recipe, you know, to, um, to, like, breaking open mid inhibitor and then transition slowly to, like, side lanes, and then eventually the entire base. And, I mean, yeah, the chat's talking about uh, gold right now, and, yeah, that's, like, GSM is up by one and a half thousand gold, and it, 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 has, feel, it has felt like they've been in, you know, fair control of this game, just from those uh, early moves on the bot lane, the dragons, and uh, just in general, they felt a little bit more together. But still, the fact that Goliath Esports is just over a thousand gold behind, and they have a Cassiopeia and a Varus, just hyper, you know, hyper carries in the late game. This is actually good for them. Just you know, keeping that gold lead stagnant, GSM isn't able to run away with it. Right, which is like, which is why this is still comebackable. But like, some things need to happen that fail, like. Things need to happen that favor them quickly, or else the gold lead will start to matter less and less after, like, like Soul Point and Baron come into play, and eventually Elder, and it probably won't matter, like, if, like, the gold lead is even at that point. Yeah, that's... Oh, because, uh, you know, because Mountain Soul is... I think it's, like, 300-something gold. Jeez, Silver Spade, get it together! He misses everything! <laughs> He's having an off game right now, you know. He's limit testing. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Silver Spade, like, is rusty on Thresh because he never gets to play it. Cause oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll we'll just go with that. I, yeah. Like, if it gets banned away from him so much, like, there are some t there were like some seasons where like people would always ban my Leona, and I was like, okay, well, I'm just not gonna practice Leona in solo queue. Like, hopefully they'll stop banning it from me. But more importantly, if I'm never gonna get to play it. And oh my god, Zacho's just gonna run down Snoopy. <laughs> <laughs> he does need the Tom Kench to uh, bail him out there, but uh, it was kind of... It was kind of, you know, close. It was a close call for him. And if... If, like, an AD carry can't, like, stop Mundell from taking your towers, then I think... Then, like, pretty much nobody can. And eventually, you're just gonna have to concede. You're just gonna have to concede like almost every single tower. Yeah, it's like wherever Mundo is, you need to send multiple people there to even stop him, much less kill him. And well, like you couldn't really like kill him. It's more like a deterrence, I guess. Yeah, and like Zacho might be caught here. He is slowed down. He is gonna flash away. I think he's gonna get. Yeah, he's gonna pop his ultimate here. Now the flash forward by Tetra. The ignite is ticking, so Zacho isn't healing all that much, but he just walks away. Again, not killing him. They're just stopping him. Now, Panther is here, and it is going to force Tetra and Hoya away. 
So that's two summoner spells for one, and GSM is just getting all sorts of, you know, map presence here off of that. Yeah. Uh, not having the Rylize on the Casio, I think, was really what kind of, like, was kind of a head scratcher considering that you don't have enough like consistent like CC to keep him where you want him, right? And right now it's um things are it's the calm before the storm, right? Who changed got... the freaking? Ugh. <laughs> Someone changed the stream the title again. If anyone's in if anyone's in Get Rec Two watching right now, tell Austin don't change the stream title. It's changing mine, not his. <laughs> Yeah, Seriously. we got Mountain Drake coming up in about 30 seconds or so, so the calm before the storm. We're gonna really see if Goliath is going to put the moves on yeah, and they're... actually have an all-out brawl. Well, unfortunately for Goliath, with Dragon coming up in 10 seconds, Snoopy's still not there. So he's gonna be getting there as Dragon spawns, which gives Silver Spade opportunity to look for these picks. And now and all of this damage on Tetra, the ultimate, comes out from anti here. They've got a lot of damage on the Levi's. They're going to flash forward. Great Grump has the ultimate, will use it. They're going to pick him up. But now Tetra in the back line is dead. Hoya is going to go down as well. Panther running forward, trying to save his team. They're going to get the knockup onto Silver Spade, but Hoya's down. Antihero's down. It looks like Great Grump will be going down soon. Panther pulls him back with a beautiful face breaker. Cannot catch him with the tip of the haymaker but it will be the Mountain Soul coming in for GSM. And uh, this, is pretty, this is pretty standard from what you expect from GSM's comp, right? Um, they, they got, or they didn't get engaged on. They, they found the pick on the Tetra, which forced the Tom Kenshi. And like, because, because um, your DPS is, or like one of your DPSs was already compromised, like it up El Zacco and Panther to kind of just like wreak havoc in the back, and there was really like nothing they could do about it. And since they weren't, they weren't, they couldn't use the opportunity. Glad these forces like Varus and Cassio couldn't use the uh, the front line by the anti hero and Great Gromp. It was kind of just like a lost team fight from the get go. Yeah, so, you know, GAW, they ha they kind of had to walk into that. They had to stop the the uh, Mountain Soul, and unfortunately, they got picked early, and that was pretty much that. Now, El Zacco is going to get engaged on by Great Gromp. Uh, Zacco does have a Bramble Vest, so he's actually going to be the one with healing reduction if it comes down to this 2v1, uh, which basically means they won't be able to kill him. Yeah, he is... I don't know. If, if he dies, like... If he dies at all, like until the game is over, I'm gonna be kind of disappointed. A little bit, not really. Yeah, I mean, um, anything right short now... of a four v one is just kind of like, uh, but how did he die there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And if he's in a four v one, then you're like, how did? Why did he put himself in a four v one? Right, and right now I think GSM, I think they're they're eyeing up. They should be eyeing up the Baron, seeing as how like. You should have Mundo drawing a lot of pressure in a side lane, and you just go Baron for free. Your carries are definitely a lot stronger. Um, Zaya is on two, uh, two and two thirds of an item compared to Varus, who's kind of just—he really has yet to start on his like real third item, so he's definitely behind. Uh, Cassio and Ari. They're kind of even just because of the the massive CS difference, but I think Castiel can't carry the team fight. And here we do see GSM. They start up a Baron, but they quickly get off of it, seeing as Glad these forces kind of immediately respond. And we kind of have like we have like a little stare down here, and both teams just decide to walk away and fight for mid cryo. Yeah, I mean they. Like, what they really need, yeah, they basically need this. They have that pick machine in Thresh, and Silver Spade wasn't hitting, you know, hitting those hooks around the Baron, where they're trying to bait it, start the, you know, start that fight and that dance, but he wasn't able to find anything, so they just had to back off, and now they are going to find something. They take down Snoopy, they're gonna get the anti-hero as well, and that is three members picked up of Goliath Esports. It means that GSM can crack open this base. They're gonna pick up the inhibitor here in the mid lane. They might go for more, but it looks like they will just back off instead. The Baron is in their sights. 
It was a uh, really good. It was really good by GSM. Uh, Levi really got the pick on Snoopy, and he and he didn't see that coming. And then Panther just he just suplexed the anti-hero back into his team, and they're they're going for a they're going to try and like bush camp right now. Yeah, they're and trying to bait, but shouldn't really Great Grump be able to see them? That's kind well, of well, she killed the Baron, so and it wasn't getting hit, so they knew. They knew like it, they weren't doing it, and they were somewhere, so, or like there was something. They had a reset, or they were just like waiting in a bush somewhere. Yeah. So uh, GSM, they just have to reset here. I mean, they could have tried to go for that Baron, but with all the members back up for Goliath Esports, uh, they are just gonna reset, let these minions push in, and try and use that pressure to hopefully find something different. Zacco does not have TP, but there's a giant wave crashing up there on that bot side. Uh, inner turret. So now the assist pings coming in in the Baron pit from Great Gromp. Looks like Goliath Esports Warriors will just have to collapse around there. And right now, um, it doesn't seem like they want to, like they're not like eyeing up the Baron like as it's their main priority. Just it seems like they're kind of like half and half between the upcoming. Elder and the Baron. We got Silver Spade here, getting a nice hook. Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure. Nice okay, hook. So. Okay, they are going to find Hoya. Or actually, he flashes the wall. Now Panther's here. The flash over the wall by Levi's. They are going to find the anti hero. He jumps forward. Beekeeper on a rampage. Now Levi's moving forward. He does get hit by that Varus chain of corruption, but they're just going to walk away with the one pick. However, they can do a lot with just that one pick. Levi's. Is here. He's taking a lot of damage though. Flash forward. Ooh. Silver Spade not able to find that pick. But they can move on to these uh, Nexus turrets. They're just gonna go for the first one. They've got the redemption ticking. They pick up Hoya with the death sentence. That's a death sentence for that Tom Kench. Beekeeper is unstoppable as this next wave of minions comes in. It's a 3v5 here as GSM try and look for the end. They're going to finally be able to crack down that bot side Nexus turret. They're going for the top side now. Zacco's running in. He's just a big tanky mundo. There's an executioner's calling, but that's not going to be enough. The anti-hero now stunned up. He has the ultimate available, but will he even be able to use it? He's going for it. Now Beekeeper's going to take down the Nexus. It's a 32-minute win for GSM. Uh, congrats to GSM on the win. They uh, they really did good at the very end. Silver Spade, you know, finally living up to his name, you know. Getting those picks coming up in spades. He's getting the uh, the Tom Kench. He's getting those, he's really getting those hooks that are uh, really clutch. And when they were trying to take down the Nexus, preventing them from to Naked Beekeeper and stopping him from hitting the Nexus. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that was like... It, it just kind of went nowhere for so long, and then GSM just decided, oh, let's just end, guys. <laughs> it's... I don't know, it was, like, super interesting to see how that first game turned out, but of course, Goliath Esports Warriors kept themselves in that game for so long... We're going to take a five-minute break. We'll be back with Game 2. We'll see if Goliath Esports Warriors can do it again, bring it to a three-game series. I believe our first of the day. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, been it's been Game 1. But let's see what happens in Game 2. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We just saw GSM taking down Goliath Esports Warriors in game one of our other gold semifinal. And now Goliath Esports Warriors looking to bring it back. Yeah, and right off the bat, they, um... Who had side selection in game one, Dean? You... Uh, GSM had side select game one, so... Okay, so... Goliath Esports opts to pick blue side here. And is that a bug, or did they just not ban anyone? <laughs> I think they might have just not banned anyone. <laughs> uh, okay, then. Okay. Um, so, Goliath picking blue side means it sounds like they do have something they want to prioritize, potentially. Um, I don't know if, if it's going to get banned away. Here we have just class. Yeah, you know, just like, you know, average bans, they do opt to ban out the set this time. Um, I do wonder how this is going to change GSM's uh, jungle pool just by a little bit. And here oh. we can finally get a glimpse as to what they were, like, really wanting to pick. And they do prioritize Ornn. Uh, very good, very good first pick, in my opinion. Ornn is just an all-around strong top laner. He does everything that you would want him to, and even more at that. And GSM do respond with a Morgana and a Mumu. Okay. All right, that's it. All right. Ugh, game's over, guys. <laughs> game's over? Yeah, Silver Spade got his Morgana. Panther got his Amumu. I mean, Great Grump has Olaf, which should be able to beat up on the Mumu in a vacuum, but also, this is Panther's Amumu, so... <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. Uh... Chat, uh, Vid thinks game's over. Um, I don't really know your opinions on this, but uh, what do you guys think? You think a Moomoo Morgana is just enough, just instantly like wipe out the game already? Uh, Olaf Ezreal coming in for Goliath. Yeah, and I mean, like, so the Diana's out of the like Diana's out of the question. Set, of course, also taken away. So Zacco can't get his hands on that. Levi can't get his hands on Diana. Uh, but like. There's just, yeah. If he, if I mean, he takes Mundo again against Orn. What are you gonna right. do aside from get Olaf way far ahead? Um. So the Mundo here is actually a really good pick, since uh, Glad Esports have really kind of like shown their hand, and they don't have like a real tank busting champion. Like Ezreal is not really good. At killing tanks compared to someone like a uh, like a Varus, for example. Yeah. So it really kind of like it really relies on their mid lane to see if they have someone that can deal with tanks. Yeah, and uh, Syndra band coming out here and an Echo band. Um, not really. I wouldn't say. So they do prioritize banning out the mid laner, which I think is all right. Cassio in particular is a very good ban since she is like a dps mage which can potentially uh kill the mundo yeah because i mean you can't really take away all of the you know you can't take away all of the adcs that snoopy would want to play or uh not snoopy or take away all of the um mid laners yeah mid laners so you just prioritize as you said someone that can bust that mundo and the only you know one of the only good machine gun mages is Cassiopeia right now. Of course, Rise is, like, potential, but he's not nearly as good as Cass is. And the Orianna going to be picked up for Levi's as well. Um, and the Zillion coming in for Goliath. Um, so hopefully that is a mid... I can't really tell if that's a mid Zillion or support Zillion. Or it's got to be a mid Galio, right? Judging by this point, now I'm on board with the vid. I think this game is kind of... Unless Goliath, like, pull, like, a miracle, like, out of nowhere, and they just get, like, ten kills in, like, five minutes, they're just gonna get, like, heavily outscaled, I think. Yeah. And it's, it's... kind of... <laughs> yeah, and it's Jinx, gonna be a like... really rough, like, wow. uphill battle. Yeah, I mean, I don't... I, I think Goliath Esports have really drafted themselves into a corner here. I mean, allowing Amumu Morgana to go first two picks for GSM, I mean, that's bad enough, you know. We, like, right. I was ready to call it in champ select there. But then you toss on top of that, you don't 
be you don't take tank busters for mundo i mean you've got galios or oh, oh wow so that is going to be oh they're switching back and forth we'll uh, we'll, we'll just not make any aspersions on that until <laughs> until so we... like it's their team comp or this draft is like you gave you gave gsm everything they want like you handed them like a rocket launcher and like instead of like letting them shoot it at you you just like take your own life like it's over before like it even began yeah yeah you're, you're not just telling them like okay here's the win you're you're saying even if you don't want this win i will make you have it <laughs> <laughs> i'll get <laughs> yeah, yeah and uh, uh so it's talking about like lane specific matchups and whatnot um orn into mundo um can potentially be orn favored just because he has ridiculous amounts of damage early on, but when Mundo kind of gets his tank items, he gets his ulti and kind of regens all of his HP. It's kind of like a moot point. Um, Olaf versus Amumu, it's kind of like, it's just a different version of the jungler matchup we saw last game, where it's it's on Olaf to kind of do things and try and hold Amumu back. Um, mid lane is... I wouldn't say it's, it's, not, it's not like good but it's not bad since you can just call olaf over to your like you can have galio call olaf over and kind of just like blow summoners and after blow summoners you kind of have like you have that pressure um in the bot lane right it's definitely gsm favorite just no question about it i think that you're you're playing on a really good you're playing on like a small small type rope right you get hit by like one binding or like one like chomp from jinx and i think it's kind of over you're dead you just move on right yeah i like i think the one shining spot like the one bright spot that goliath esports warriors have in this draft is the olaf um right i think it's still going to be really hard to basically win the game through jungle especially when you're into panthers amumu but if anyone can do it on this team, it's gonna have to be Great Gromp because Olaf just has so much early pressure over Amumu. He can help gank, especially against this Mundo. Orianna also doesn't have any mobility. So if he if Great Gromp and Tetra can just lock the lock Levi's up repeatedly, I think Goliath these words warriors have a chance. It's just it's not looking good. <laughs> it really doesn't look good. Any way you look at it, like um, you get outscaled in almost every single way possible, right? Like your AD, like Ezreal does not outscale Jinx. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put Galio above outscaling Orianna. Um, Olaf, as we all know, has a tendency to fall off after like whether or not he like does his duty in the early game. Orn is, Orn is Orn. But even Orn is like not enough. Yeah, I, I think say. solo Orn doesn't outscale Mundo, but like he helps his team scale a little better. But considering they're just kind of outmatched in scaling across the board, I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. Even if Goliath Esports get to that point. Yeah. So, spectator delay is about out. So we're going to get into loading screen tomorrow. Unfortunately, is not best of five. We still have to do best of three because we have three finals and three third place matches uh to stream and if anything went to five games it would kill the entire stream and our casters so <laughs> you know okay and we have let's see here thunderlord orn cool skin hextech amumu that one's pretty, pretty nice. badass yeah. <laughs> You a big fan of uh, uh any of these ones happening right now? What did you, what did you say? Uh, runes or? Or no, uh, skins. Oh, like skins. any any preferences. Uh, Darkstar Oriana is pretty awesome. I do like that one. Uh, yeah, it's just smooth. It's like it's clean. Yeah, uh, me personally, I guess I do prefer. I believe it is Bladecraft. I think that's the one. Mm, yeah. Or maybe I'm just like a very like like old school player. Like I prefer some old skins compared to more modern skins. Like on the Ezreal, I wouldn't say like I'm a big fan of like Pajama or Star Guardian. 
a uh, really big fan of Nottingham. Okay. Uh, even though it has doesn't have like new particles and whatnot, you know. Yeah, I'm a, I'm an arcade Ezreal kind of guy. I I can respect. I that. like his fun particles. Um, Galio. I've got Infernal Galio, so that one's pretty cool. Oh, I too have Infernal Galio. I think that's a really. Yeah. Even though, I since I'm an AD player, I'm not allowed to like play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> since I play support. You know, sometimes I get my hands on a Galio. Sometimes I get to have fun. Commando Galio, greater than all. Debonair Ezreal, best skin. Debonair Ezreal's pretty good. I don't like the way that his um, his, like his shirt looks really flat with like the tie and everything. It doesn't. I don't think it looks super good. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, everyone has their preferences, you know. And here we get into game. Finally, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, going, let's go do, go ahead and do call-outs. Yeah, um, so, now on the blue side this time is Goliath Esports Warriors. We've got the anti-hero on Orn in the top lane, Great Gromp in the jungle on Olaf, Tetra in the mid lane on Galio, and Snoopy and Hoya in the bot lane on Ezreal and Zillion. And on GSM, we have El Zacco, 69, on the window. Panther on the Mumu in the jungle, GSM Levi on Orion in the mid lane, and in their bot lane we have Naked Beekeeper and Silver Spade on Jinx and Morgana. Yeah, so GSM usually uh, likes to go for an early invade down when they're red side. They go through for an early invade through that tri brush, but it's good to see that they've gone back to a little more traditional, uh, a little more traditional start for these playoffs. <laughs> Uh, you know, just a, just like a five start, I guess. No one really wants to uh, rock the boat, you know. About thirty seconds in, they're more willing to like get into a fight when when everyone's like all like settled and comfortable in around say like six minutes or so. That's when they start beating up on each other. <laughs> You're right, right. It's you know it's gold. Well, you give five minutes of of uh of a grace period, and that's when everything starts hurting. Actually, I've never seen Hextechamumu in game. It's really... Uh, me neither, actually. Uh, thinking about it. When's the last time you, like, played against an Amumu, or with? Um... <laughs> uh, um... <laughs> Maybe last time I played against Panther in GRLCS? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would have banned it. Yeah, no, we had to ban uh, we had to ban Morgana and Thresh, and then we only got to ban the Zac. So both junglers opting to start uh, blue side. Um, I don't think we're going to see uh, uh, any early ganks. Maybe not from a Mumu, potentially from Olaf, since uh, since he got like they got like a slight chance of killing Window very early on. Yeah, and he could but, go um, for that gank on the mid lane as well, because it looks like he's full clearing his blue side, heading down to the bot, and uh, you know maybe fighting over Scuttlecrab there. And right now we're seeing like in the bot lane, we're kind of seeing a uh, like the pressure is on, right? And like they're they're being shoved to wave, like so though they can potentially mess up and lose CS, and because. I don't remember if um, Ezreal Zillion faked a, uh, a red leash, but if they didn't, that gives info to GSM knowing that Olaf start started blue side. And in the jungle right now, we see we see both junglers fighting for for the red buff. Yeah. And Amumu is kind of just getting he's just taking a pounding, and that's just first blood to Olaf. Yeah, he I... gets his cheeks clapped. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> like, trying to fight with an Olaf level 3 is probably not going to go for, well for any champion, so... Yeah, and Amumu of all things trying to contest is a little bit sketchy. Uh, Great Gromp is already putting on the moves, though, yeah, as an uh, early game than jungler. Last time. Yeah, I can't wait to see, I uh, can't wait to, you know, wait for Agent Jensen to come in there with a little, little 10 minute, like, like a 10 minute break break for us casting just the, the little love taps just like hey hey buddy you wanted to play no 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 no. you're not allowed to do that anymore i heard you like being a uh, 30 cs down <laughs> yeah because it, it went so well for him last time right 
right, right. Oh, now? Okay, Panther's just gonna walk away again. He gets, you know, gets engaged on. He does manage to get that scuttle crab, so it's not like he's, uh, it's not like he's getting too scuttled. Right, and they're kind of just, like, going around, like, they're just harassing, like, this poor little, like, mummy. I kind of, I would feel bad, but since it's a moo I kind of, I kind of feel nothing. Just because, <laughs> like, it's just, you, you, you made, you picked, you, like, you made your bed, you know, you really gotta just sleep in. Yeah, you it. picked a moo screw you, dude, you lost my sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, like, no wonder a moo so sad. These guys are just harassing him. It's unfortunate. But now... honestly, it's his fault in the first place. Who would, in their right mind, would contest an Olaf over a buff? That's true. Yeah, that's true. He's he stayed there too. It's not like he was just you know. It's not like he was just put, walked into the Olaf. He actually tried to fight him. <laughs> mm-hmm. But now Zacco does take a fair amount of damage here from the anti-hero. That trade doesn't really go into his favor, but luckily for Zacco, he's Mundo, so his passive is just, you know, heal. Right, it is Orin favored, but like, even though it's Orin favored, you, you, it's still like, still kind of a struggle to get anything off. Yeah. And mid lane is, mid lane is even. They're, uh, he's doing pretty well, despite like, not like, calling his jungler over to try and like, get things done, as I'm, I'm, Pretty sure Olaf has, you know, somewhere else to be. A Mumu's, you know, a Mumu, He has a Mumu's number. Uh, and... Zacco. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, flash burned. You know, and... this, the typical gold case. You know, walking a little bit too close to the sun. There we uh, go. For... <laughs> the typical gold case. You said walking a little too close to the sun. <laughs> You know, Mundo walked a little bit too close, got burned, and then, you know, uh, Orin walked a little bit too close and just got incinerated, you know? And none of them have a Sunfire Cape yet. <laughs> you know, if, if, if Orin didn't die, I'm pretty sure he might have one by now. Or not Sunfire, but uh, Bomby Cinder. There we and go. And he actually he does. Yeah, so now Zacho is just going to back off. He doesn't have his Flash, he doesn't have his ultimate he's not gonna win a fight especially if anti-hero decides to tp in with all of that you know with that shiny new bomb cinder so elzaka will get a uh get a um what is that thing shroud thing uh specter's cow specter's cow there we go so he, yeah he gets his hands on one of those so orin is not going to be trading nearly as well against him anymore and the bot lane is just nice and normal. Uh, Snoopy is about 10 CS down on Beekeeper. Uh, 15 now that I look at it. And Panther and is about Greg. to... Yeah, Panther's about to get Olaf again. And He has his number again. Uh, he does get the blue buff, though. Does he Does he get away with his life? The red smite is on, so Great Grump coming through. He's just gonna throw an undertow. But yeah, he actually... Panther actually lives and walks away with his blue, so that's a pretty big win for him, honestly. Yeah, uh, you know he doesn't get his he doesn't get his cheeks clapped by Olaf this time around. You know, whenever the uh, the third the third blue buff or the you know the third blue buff the third red buff comes around, actually the red buff is about to spawn. Yeah, so Mumu he's and gonna I reset here, he's... but he could just we'll get see. up there. But yeah, really nothing's like nothing's happening. It's just a little bit of back and forth. A little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of Olaf doing Olaf things on Panther. Yep, and, uh, Olaf, is he planning to solo the Rift Herald? I, I mean, think he, he solo is. The dragon. I think he can. Looks like he's going for it. Either, or that might be the Scuttle Grab, actually. Uh, no, that's I the Rift Herald. Yeah, that's the Rift. And he's, he's really putting on the moves this time. He, he's not... Great Grump is uh, not messing around after after game one's performance. He's uh, putting on like his dancing shoes and his like and his not his dancing shoes. Sorry, he's putting on his work boots, and he's really going to work now. Here we have a uh, Panther coming up, going for a potential gank. But Great Grump is here for a counter gank. But um, both junglers <laughs> decide to just walk away and let the Ornol kind of just do its thing. 
Yeah, Call of the Forge God came out at the same time as the uh, Mundo Ultimate, so they just had to trade the cooldowns and walk back away from each other. So uh, Panther and Great Crop, they waste a little bit of time up there, but you know they waste it evenly, so it's not like you know it's not like one one jungler is losing out significantly or something. Right. And the CS difference in bot lane is just getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, it's, now it's uh, 25. Almost... <laughs> it's um definitely an uphill battle so far. I'm a little bit surprised that no one, or not, no, uh, that uh, Goliath's bot lane hasn't died yet. Because it's just like a very easy setup for GSM's bot lane. But they don't... I think they do deserve some praise, Goliath's bot lane, for uh, not having died yet. Even though you're down to, like, CS, not dying is probably way more important. As yeah, I mean, if you're still alive, you can still at least keep getting, like, more CS. Yeah, I mean, Olaf was putting on his work boots, but Snoopy and Hoya here, putting on their dancing shoes, they haven't gotten hit by, really, any uh, Morg bindings, and or even the Flame Chompers. So they've been keeping themselves safe. And, of course, like, for Ezreal, that's pretty easy, because, you know, he's Ezreal. But right. at the same time, for Zillion, that's not nearly, not nearly as close. Mm-hmm. And... For right now, as the it's a 800 gold lead on GSM side, and right now it's mainly mainly because of the massive CS difference in the bot lane. You're looking at 30 CS, like right now. Um, yeah, 500 I don't gold there really the think. Uh, you know, I might eat my words, but like. I think this is the point where you kind of expect it to just kind of stagnate, you know? Like, it, I don't think it can get any worse, hopefully. Yeah, uh, unless these the teams, Forge like, God. really start fighting over this dragon. I mean, we could see that. We've got two people from uh, Goliath Esports coming through, and now the anti-hero actually might get engaged on Vial Zacco. He's running him down. The Call of the Forge God is available. Zacco does get clapped, but the damage is coming through. <laughs> Minion block now. The Call of the Forge God, it will not even hit. He goes down, Panther, and now uses the ultimate. Paris the Sad Mummy, but Tetris chasing him down. That forces the flash, and that is now a 3v4. But, ooh, lots of damage coming through. 4v4 here, but Panther super low. If Snoopy jumps forward, they could try and find Panther and secure themselves the dragon. Now, that's the snap though, over there, Tetra does go down, but he's got the Chrono Shift. That is going to be great. Crop falling, however. It's a one for one, not to mention that solo kill in the top lane. Panther is out of a smite. And he's super low. Tetra's looking for him. Silver Spade is going to miss the binding. That is huge. The teleport coming out by El Zacco. They're moving in. The Rift comes Herald in has been dropped. Uh, Goliath Esports, I believe... I think they're just forced to back off. The best thing you could try and go for here is a steal. But keep in mind that Amumu does have smite. And there it is. And... Cloud Drake does go over to GSM after a very, like a very like long fight from on both sides of the map. Yeah, I mean there was a solo kill in the top lane. There's that giant fight in the mid or in the around the dragon, and El Zacco actually teleported in, wasn't able to do anything. Meanwhile, I think Goliath having him there uh, helped secure the dragon. Yeah, he secures the dragon and. Yeah, now I guess he's just kind of taken on Tetra in the mid lane, so it's not like they're losing a significant amount here, uh, because Levi's has caught the wave. But potentially Great Crump could try and look for something in the mid lane if Zacco overstays, but it doesn't look like he will. And now we're kind of back to the, uh, the usual program. Uh, Gold lead, though, is, it's, you know, much, much closer. It's well, let's small it, now. yeah. Yeah back from the uh, 800 that it was a couple minutes ago. That's mostly the plates. It's mostly the plates. All right, and right now on Goliath's side, Olaf does have all the kills, which I think is to be expected. Maybe it would be better if Ezreal had, like, one of the kills. But at this point, you know, all your chips are on... Yeah, I mean, you're putting ults. And Jinx does have a kill, which is definitely from, or on GSM side, as it's going to help accelerate, like, her, her her scaling into becoming a 
hyper carry monster. Yeah, so I mean, she's got 40 C or 35 CS and the extra kill, so she is going to be able to finish her, her Infinity Edge. Meanwhile, Snoopy just got the Mana Mune and uh, the Boots of Speed, so this, you know, if if the bot lane of GSM starts like starts fighting a little bit more, it could very much go in favor of the red side here, just because, you know, Jinx diff. Yeah, this is definitely like the point like in lane where you get hit by one binding. That's gonna be a flash, an exhaust, or like a zillion ulti just to survive. Yeah. Right? Because there's no, I don't think there's any way you're gonna be escaping, like if you get hit by one of those. Meanwhile, though, looks like Great Grump is going to solo his second Rift Herald of the game. Uh, I, like, he can do it. He obviously, he did the first one, and now he's got that warrior enchant. Meanwhile, the anti hero is just kind of zoning Zacho, uh, keeping him from heading down to that Rift Herald, and it looks like Olaf will be able to get that with no trouble. Good map movements here by Goliath Esports. They're just making sure that... Uh, making sure that they have the priority in all of these lanes where they're trying to get these, uh, you know, trying to get the Herald. Yeah, uh, Greg Gromp is really, you know, he has a nice, I bet he has a nice pair of, like, work boots. Like, where does he buy them from? Because I, I definitely need some, or at least my, I think my jungler does. <laughs> <laughs> buy him for him on, uh, with the, with the money you get from playing in the final, you know? <laughs> get him a nice pair of work boots and just say, okay, we're good here, but... Tetra and we have a Moomoo Moo coming in here. for a gank. Yeah, uh, he is going to get ulted back. Panther coming through. He's got the curse of the sad mummy. Will he need to use it? He will. The root coming through. The ignite ticking. Tetra does knock up Panther. And now that's the Ragnarok pop. And Great Grump is just going to pick off Levi's. He's looking for the mummy as well. And clap, clap, clap. That's the sound of robot cheeks. <laughs> he's, uh, it's, now he's just doing, like, doing a nice little jig with his work boost now, you know? Instead of doing hitting up Rift Herald is getting a double kill. Uh, good zillion ulti to prevent an actual death from the Jinx rocket. And now it's just the gold lead is now in Goliath's favor just by a slight five. Yeah, and they did get that uh, Rift Herald charge off. Not only did they take out that, inner, that middle turret, they got the charge onto the inner turret as well, so that should be fairly low now if Goliath Esports Warriors decide to move in on that, but we'll have to see if they decide to do that. Um, the last series that I casted was the um, was the Pig Pootitan Gang. Their the inner turret was on like 20 health for you know for like five minutes, and they didn't take it. <laughs> they just couldn't like get to it, or they just didn't want to. They just didn't want to. They could you know they could have like <laughs> sent two guys there, but now. Oh, and here. Tetra walks into three people. Yeah, he has he to flash his boards. Ooh, that is a really good ultimate by Levi's that actually pulled him back into the flame chompers. So that's a pick on the mid laner, and that's with a dragon on the board. So we'll see if GSM go for it. They've got Panther and the teleport coming in from the anti hero. They're gonna try and force this, or at least zone this off 5v5. And time. It's ticking. Dragon's HP is dropping. If you're gonna do what you gotta do, you gotta do it now. And you gotta watch Olaf. Great Grump, he's through. just massive. <laughs> Run straight yeah, through the Oriana. Now Snoopy, he will be going down. Double kill for Naked Beekeeper, and that is Morgana falling. But now with the Zillion dead, it's triple for the uh, for the Jinx, and unfortunately for Panther, the Antihero is uh, got some help from the blue buff, and now Antihero, will he go down? One more auto will do it, the taunt comes through, Naked Beekeeper is shut down, now El Zacco is going to get knocked up by the hero's entrance, however, that will not stop Antihero from losing his life, it's a 4 for 5 now, but El Zacco might make 5 on the side of GSM, Tetra is on the run, El Zacco doesn't have his ultimate, but does he really need it? Tetra gets the Mundo dangerously low, but <laughs> the dragon is stopped in a dead even team fight. <laughs> it, was, it was actually one of the craziest like things I've seen, I guess, in a while. You had Olaf kind of like, it almost looked good for him because the Ornn ulti onto uh, the three in the back line, but they did, they did have enough damage, or they did have enough damage to blow him up immediately and prevent the uh, the Olaf snowballing. 
And I think this is slowly getting to the part where Olaf kind of just fades out of existence as Jinx did get a triple kill, I think? Yeah, triple kill. Yeah, she did get a triple kill and she's on her way to her second item. So like slowly, like this is like the end of like the Olaf era and welcome to, to welcome to uh, the Jinx Overlord, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, and now the dragon, uh, okay, here it goes. Goes down in favor of GSM, that's their second of the game. So after all of that, Tetra getting picked, a four for four in the resulting team fight, and then the fight afterward, somehow GSM still managed to come out on top. They do not have the gold lead, however, that is still in possession of the live esports warriors, but it's only about 200 gold, and with Naked Beekeeper scaling the way he is, that might start to swing very soon. Right, and seeing as it's another mountain soul, um, before, not, not what I've said before, uh, back in the first game when I said that, that Mountain Soul helps prevent, like, helps prevent death, since if they drop their full combo on you and the shield, like, prevents you from, like, dying to, to their setup, then it's pretty much an easy, like, it's pretty much an easy win. Right, and if Olaf runs at you, I think you're gonna feel like a lot more confident knowing that you have uh, Mountain Soul and die before you end up killing him. At least I hope that would be the case for GSM if they do get it. If Goliath does end up getting it, it'll it'll definitely uh, help their three their three frontliners to last a bit longer. So. Yeah, I mean, like, keep getting that Ornn into that kind of hyper tank and actually letting Olaf, because, you know, he doesn't really build that many resistances, but he does build a lot of health. So, right. that'll be that'll be pretty huge for keeping Olaf at least a little bit relevant, you know, me making sure that Levi's has to worry about him, even though, you know, it's like, because Beekeeper could just shred him otherwise. Right, right. And we're kind of in a, uh, a little bit of, like, a stalemate, as there's really nothing... There's nothing to really fight over except Baron, but I don't think both teams are just like that ready to commit to uh to commit to a team fight to like seeing who gets it just yet. Yeah, I don't think GSM really has the DPS for that. Uh, or sorry, I don't think GEW really has the DPS for that. And then I don't think GSM really like wants to take this Baron fight because I mean we saw what happened in the last fight. They you know each team walked out with one member left. But now. <laughs> GSM is here, the anti-hero is going to try and buffer the stun, but it does not buffer. Now the ultimate comes out from Tetra, the knockup comes through onto Naked Beekeeper. He has the flash, he won't need to use it just now, but if Tetra jumps forward, that might change very soon. Tetra gets rooted up, and Beekeeper is going to live. He just had to use his, fla or his heal for it. Now Tetra has the flash, he could go try and go in, Naked Beekeeper is playing so far back and they're waiting for the rest of their team to come in. Levi's moving forward and has all of his spells up, he's coming through, he has the flash, will he use it? He gets taunted up by Tetra, Tetra this does get pulled back, that's a good ultimate there by Oriana, they're gonna pick up one onto the Olaf, meanwhile El Zacco is 1v3 and will he kill Snoopy despite being 1v3, he gets the zillion ult down, great grump chasing him down, Zacco has the flash still, he used his ultimate, now Tetra on the run, he's gonna go down, thank you to Panther for catching him with the damage toss. The Ragnarok comes through, Zacco will go down, and that is the shutdown picked up for Great Grump. But look at all of the pressure that GSM has in this top side. They're gonna pick up an inner turret along with those two kills. So if you were if you were Goliath there, and if you were the Orn and the Galio, you would definitely not want that fight, considering you know you're outnumbered, and three of your members are kind of just like chasing the window down. They do get him eventually, but th it's definitely not work because the immediately response the immediate response by GSM make the Baron. And like I said that like no no team wants to take like commit to the Baron uh because like G Goliath is not strong enough and GSM does not want to risk a um does not want to risk being like collapsed on while they're doing it. But 
a Goliath, you just gave them like a free... You kind of just invited them like into the Baron pit and just gave it to them for free. Yeah. And, and it's just... It's just a giant mistake. Now I think it's going to be, be a lot harder to come back. Yeah, not to mention, I mean, even Panther got away. Beekeeper and Panther flashed out. Great Grump wasn't able to find the reckless, uh, reckless strikes onto Panther, so... Four members of GSM now have the Baron, and the Mountain Drake is coming up in three seconds. So with Mundo pushing in the top side, GSM can look to fight over this. And that's just Jinx. She's got two and a half items plus the Executioner's Calling. This is going to be scary, especially if you're Great Grump, because that Executioner's Calling is all for you, baby. And chat has pointed out that Ezreal is skipping Triforce? In exchange for a port. Oh. But first, the ultimate is going to be used. That's just going to be uh, Olaf finally going down. He's trying to fall. Uh, he will. Panther now uses the Curse of the Sad Mummy, and that is going to be Tetra falling. Snoopy falling. Hoya falling. The anti-hero trying to chase down Beekeeper. He will not be able to find Panther. And Great Kromp is on the run. He wasn't able to win the fight for his team. He's going to try and pick up Silver Spade on the back end, but he won't even get that. GSM is on soul point there. Uh, definitely a, uh, uh, just a shutout by GSM. It was almost pretty close since Olaf did. He nearly managed to get Jinx, and they couldn't really do much about it uh, since he had Zillion ulti. But, uh, the Ori ulti combo into the Jinx, uh, into the Jinx ult really sealed it, like, really, like, spelled that at the end for Goliath, as that kind of just, like, instantly won them the team fight and then won them the dragon. Yeah, I mean, they got that giant Curse of the Sad Mummy. Levi's got to use his ultimate and just, just mowed through it. The Jinx is now 8, 1, and 4, has finished that Rapid Fire Cannon on top of the other two items. So uh, he is two, he's like an item and a half ahead of his part of his uh, opponent. And now with Tetra picked up, he's 9, 1, and 4. He should be able to start looking for that uh, Mortal Reminder soon and they are just not showing any sign of stopping. They have 30 seconds left on this Baron buff, so they're going to try and push it to every single advantage that they can. The ultimate used by Ezreal is going to get some damage off, but it's not going to be enough to stop anything. Just pause it while they wait for the next wave of minions to come out. Right, and I think this is... This probably is the end. Uh, assuming you can get a pick onto a Zillion or Ezreal, then I do think like it's definitively the end. Yeah. As there's no one else left to like really stop you from taking turrets and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, six of the nine kills on Goliath Esports are currently sitting topside, failing to kill Zacco. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you have to wonder, like, what are they? You know, what are they? What are they succeeding at? If Great Gromp is here, he's not even healing either because Zacco has the Bramble Vest. So. GSM can just try and look for something here in this mid lane, or in this mid lane, and now Hoya <laughs> gets picked off, doesn't even use the Chrono Shift. So now, an again, another man down, Goliath Esports has to continue holding here in all three lanes. And Orin is, for some reason, clearing Bot Wave instead of trying to help his team out here. Uh, a little bit of... There. And like you were saying, Great Gromp, he, he just can't break the, like, indestructible. Or maybe he can! He can, yeah, but he does it at the cost of his inhib. <laughs> he uh, does sacrifice his team's inhibitor in doing so. I mean, I don't, like, we, we had a lot of problems with the fact that Olaf was going to be the only one who could break through Mundo anyways. But right. I think that kind of summed it up, like why that was such a problem. Because they do have one guy that can kill Mundo, but Mundo's Without not going to be boss. fighting in these team fights. He's going to be going right. top, and the entire strength of Goliath Esports has to deal with him. Right. And um, back to a topic that Chad did point out, or like a couple minutes ago when they were fighting over Mountain. Uh, Ezreal did skip uh, Triforce for Blade of the Ruin King for like its tank like busting. Um, in my opinion, it's not bad, It's, but it's definitely not great either, 
I think if you want to compromise by like getting a tank busting item, you should like budget Sheen item and go Gauntlet. Because I don't know if he's going Gauntlet or if he's going Triforce. Yeah, I mean, I just think, like, Triforce or the Sheen item is so important for Ezreal's damage because of the 20% cooldown reduction. Right. I don't think you can ever afford to skip it, even if it means you're just going to buy the components or something, just so you get to 40% CDR. Because, you know, when you're looking at, when you're looking at fr uh, Frozen Fist, Iceborne Gauntlet, you're... You know, it's nice to have all of the to have the slow field, but if you really need to like break through Zacco, then yeah, you can go ahead and get that Blade of the Ruin thing. But now uh, it looks like Anti here is going to be cut down. The Chrono they, shift. Or actually, he might get away wow. just because the Chrono Shift is a deterrent. Yeah, and, but now that means that this bot in uh, this bot inner turret is open. So. Again, GSM are just finding more wins on this map, and Zacco fighting off Great Gromp. He doesn't even attack him, and he's winning in health. Now, Great Gromp moving forward. Zacco can use the ultimate. He will, and Great Gromp is chasing. But again, it's it's the strongest member of Goliath Esports in the top lane. Meanwhile, the other four members of GSM are taking on the rest of Goliath Esports. The Ragnarok is and popped. And Great Gromp is yeah. slowly losing. Zacco, yeah, Zacco just wins this one actually because he got the cold steel passive with the uh, he got the cold steel passive with that warden's mail. He is now unkillable for one man. <laughs> and there we go. That's soul. <laughs> and that's soul. And eventually, I think right now, if you if you're not going to run at the base and end it immediately, you should run to Baron since. Uh, Olaf is down and there's really nothing stopping you. Like if you really wanted to like put like the nail in the coffin, Baron would probably be the correct choice. Yeah, it, like, you know, GSM can just kind of screw around for a little bit longer. Cause I, the I think, KDA. I, yeah. yeah, at this point I think they have the power to, you know, they're not, we, we were talking about how they outscaled already and now they're like ridiculously far ahead and outscaled with the Mountain Soul, with the Mundo. They're just gonna crack open these inhibitors, and there's nothing that Great Grump can really do except flash forward on the Beekeeper. But, I mean, at some point, Beekeeper, yeah, the Ragnarok is gonna be down, so finally, Great Grump does die, but that's just the GA. He has taken down Nate Beekeeper, but meanwhile, the rest of his team, Snoopy, is dead. Tetra does get Levi's, however. Now, Silver Spade is getting run down, and Mundo in the top lane in this 4v5, uh, his team is gonna lose the 4v5. But they're going to pick up the um, they're going to pick up the inhibitor turret, and Panther is going to survive. Uh, well, a phoenix rises from the ashes, and his name is a uh, great Grom. As suddenly it looks like it looks like it's time to shine again. <laughs> uh, uh, being able to cut down the Jinx and win the team fight for his yeah, he actually uh, revived twice in that fight. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Yeah, he revived uh, twice in the fight, once with the GA and then once with the Zillion ultimate, but, you know, it was enough to win the fight, just, they're still behind on the map. Yeah, uh, I think GSM, you know, now, now you do the Baron, maybe your mental is a little shaken because you lost the fight, maybe not, because you were just, you were just messing around, you know, you know trying to pad your KDA, and you, you know, you messed up, just go take the Baron, and, and go take your one. Yeah, I mean, you're still 5k ahead, and, like, granted, or there are four Orn items on the board right now, um, but it's an Abyssal Mask for Tetra, and then the Obsidian Cleaver for Great Grom. So it's, you know, it's not like Ezreal is getting, you know, a, a Trinity Fusion. It's, that's, right. like, one of the best ones, and now Great Grom in the middle of the fight, but this time he doesn't have the GA. He will respawn, but that is going to be the Baron taken by GSM. Will it help them, though, in this resulting fight? Panther doesn't have the ultimate. He already used it, and Silver Spade is going to get run down by the anti-hero. However, he is not dead. Mundo is just not killable. That's Chat was right. This is a Mundo who will literally never die again. Olaf, Olaf is, you know, Olaf's time is over. Jinx is overrated. Now it's Mundo's time to shine. <laughs> and... He He's just gonna take whatever they throw at him. Mundo doesn't really care. Mundo goes wherever he pleases. Mundo yeah. beats down whatever inhibitor he pleases. You know? 
Yeah, I mean, he's gonna get, like, knocked up, CC, they're gonna do some damage to him, the Bork, you know, coming out big here for Snoopy, but it doesn't really matter because you can't deal with the Baron minions right now, and Zacco literally does not give a single bother. He is haunted up, doesn't even have the ultimate, and he still doesn't care. He's taking some damage, he's gonna get taunted up, he will finally die. Actually, uh, you know, uh, well, chat, you were wrong. Mundo, he wasn't unkillable after all. Yeah, he, I mean, Mundo is, uh, Mundo wasn't, was killable, but that was after he ate literally everything that the enemy team threw <laughs> at him. <laughs> Without ultimate. So as um as you know the game that should have ended about a couple minutes ago keeps on the game that should have ended keeps on giving uh now we're potentially looking at an elder fight yeah the elder does come up in a minute and 50 seconds meanwhile baron still has 4 minutes and 15 until uh it's back up so yeah it's what you said it's we're going for an elder fight here because GSM uh, has not decided to end yet. I'm not sure if it's because they can't or if they're just kind of trolling. Uh, alright, so if you're Goliath here, you have one last chance, I think, to perfect the, uh, the Olaf Zillion combo, and finally, you, you gotta get it right this time. You know, Olaf just has to be that raging, like, berserk that ends up killing everyone, or else game's over. Or, or just no elder. How, how about just no elder? Just run it straight down in the base and just win the game. I guess I'm just completely wrong. Yeah, I mean they could just go for it. Like Panther could move forward here if he finds a pick onto Snoopy. That's game basically. All three inhibs are already down, and Zacco has teleported in. It's five men versus five men, and now the knockup comes out onto Zacco. Doesn't do anything at all. Panther ults absolutely no one, and Great Crop has the ultimate. He's gonna use it to start to run forward. He's trying to find Jinx. His ultimate is on by Zillion, but it ticks down. It's out of time. So is Great Gromp, so is Goliath Esports Warriors. The anti-hero will be the next to fall. Great Gromp has left. He knows that GSM is inevitable. They will take down these Nexus turrets, pad their KDAs a bit in the fountain, and now GSM will be going to finals tomorrow. Congrats on GSM on their win against Goliath Esports. <laughs> it's kind of telling i like because of quarantine i've been casting way more platinum and diamond than i usually do because i'm the usual gold caster uh-huh and it's it's eye-opening coming back to gold games and just seeing how messy they start and then end you start seeing like some of the mistakes and like what they should and shouldn't do yeah yeah it's just like you know the the macro or you know, the lack thereof these aren't like coordinated bait the bear and start to go in but it still works <laughs> right and it's just i guess it's a testament to how much gold like players can get away with because a lot of it is just gone unpunished or yeah, ignored and i i think yeah and i think that's the, one of the big differences between uh successful gold teams and successful plat teams it's that successful gold teams don't really get punished uh for the mistakes that they make but once you you know once you get into that plat level you actually have to kind of macro some uh-huh so uh well gsm they do win 2-0 over goliath esports warriors rounding out the set of 2-0s today all six of our semifinals were 2-0 games and uh yeah as ari just hit at everyone here uh we still have tomorrow's games we still have the finals and the third place matches so, actually, make sure to tune in tomorrow at 1 p.m. for the GSM game. They're going to take on Return of the Middle Sticks for first place in gold. Also at 1 p.m. will be Pootie Tang Gang versus Goliath Esports Lions, the third place uh, platinum match. Then come back at 4 to see your very own boosted Asian take on Pigs Might Fly. Series. At least I hope so. Yeah, I mean, these should all... The finals should all be, you know, a little a little bit more entertaining. Hopefully these will go to three games uh, as opposed to all of these 2-0s. But it is always good to see a playoffs where teams don't play scared. A lot of the times when we play at LAN, teams will play scared. But it seems like online everyone's a little bit more feeling themselves, a little more comfortable. 
Uh, a little they can more play, homey, yeah. yeah. They can play like normal. So, everybody, thank you very much for watching tonight. I've been Vid, joined here by Boosted Asian, and this is the Get Wrecked Gold Semifinal. Signing off. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, everybody. See you later. Everyone. Oh.